Uh, President Me Mutsekha. Me Mutsekha, um, if I may just take you back, you know, finally, after all the toing and throwing, squabbles over, you know, disputed registers, pages, disputed nominations, you are finally going to have a conference. But not an inspiring start, it must be said. I'm not sure. It sounds very exaggerated. It's not like the conference I was preparing for. The delays had nothing to do with dispute with, with all the things you raised. What were they about? The delays were just the technical administrative process of the ANC. That before you hold an ANC conference, as the Women's League and the Youth League, you must make 70% of the ANC's quorum. So the Mangaung conference was big, so we had to match it up by 70%. And some of our structures, and, and we couldn't just get that quorum, we had to go back, for instance, in the Eastern Cape, dissolve structures and rebuild them. So it's really your technical oh, administrative process. It, uh, it, it, it um, does. A lot, of, a lot of, you know, uh, tough decisions. Yeah. Something terribly wrong must have gone on for um, you or the ANC to take that drastic step. No, but as I say, the drama you're saying about squabbles and other things, I'm saying of the nine provinces, six were solid and good state. The Northern Cape had, uh, the delay was just that their branches were, had not been to AGMs. The Eastern Cape, they failed the audits in terms of just the books and other things. That's why I say, the, yes, indeed, to delay a conference because of technical ad administrative pro problems is not acceptable. But it's not like all the whole organization was in turmoil. In your, in your message um, on, the, on your website last week, you did allude to, quote, often trying circumstances. What then were you referring to? You know, just running political organizations, like running any institution which has human beings, has its own challenges, but also dealing with women issues, it's not a very easy one. It, it, there are some problems which can be very emotional and just take so much off from you, even as an individual, to have to deal with cases on an ongoing basis of women whose genitals have been ripped off, a woman is, a will, is on a wheelchair, and you feel as part of the women's movement you have to be doing something. It could be very emotionally draining, but also just dealing with having to run such a big structure like the Women's League nationally, and making sure that indeed they meet your administrative challenges, but they're able to take up the, prog the programs and the campaigns are grid, monitor. It can also be quite a, 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 a big responsibility. So it really has its times where administratively, but emotionally, uh, most of the issues that women have to face are just emotionally training. And, and uh, the, the, the league's own uh, you know, squabbles and leadership wrangles had, had nothing to do with it? Not quite. It's not really the big drama. Uh, for me, it's not the big issues because we can resolve those. Uh, the league is fortunate that it is a, a, a structure of, of the ANC, so you really have uh, colleagues also from the other structure to help. They're not, the, for me, the most difficult part of it all. The most difficult part, really, is having to deal with the real things that affect women, go to meetings, and just find that as much as you say you've made progress, but looking at this, women just feel that. There's still challenges. Women are, are, are head carrying, you know, in the long run, they're going to have their, their backs, uh, 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 you know, affected. By the time they reach my age, they all are, are 90 degrees. So it's just a very difficult situation that women find themselves in. Yeah, so we those are the most difficult ones than the political ones. The political ones, we can deal with them. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about the, those difficult issues and how we should be dealing with them moving uh, forward. But uh, to someone who, who, who cannot tell, certainly not at face value, uh, what have been what have you been doing over the past five years? What have been your biggest achievements when you put that political report um, on, the, on the table tomorrow? What will you be sharing? You know, if you look at our resolutions in Mangam, because that's what we have to report on. The other things that people expect of us, fine and good, perhaps we, we need to answer to them. But what we have to answer to, mainly, it's whether we did implement that which was given to us as a mandate in 2008. One of the key things we were expected to do is to build a solid structure that has viable structures on the ground that can take campaigns on the ground. And we can confidently say, each time we launch a campaign, if we were going on elections, wherever we could run a train, 
with solid structure on the ground because you can't implement even some of these resolutions unless you have structures on the ground. And that's what has occupied us most of the time to take to conference a credible organization with solid structures that can take up any other campaign that is required. That's the first one. But putting elections aside, Not election. what were your, your biggest I mean, uh, programs? What were your biggest campaigns? Support to victims of violence. It's, it's a major issue around women and that's why our structures all the time not only in Oscar Spitoras, because that's what people remain, remi remi remember us for. And I always say, remember us because the media was there. We are there where the media is not there, where the cases of violations of women's rights were there. There are cases where we, we, we deal in committees in terms of friends of the poor, just run programs that address specific committee programs. So your, your poverty-related programs, your health programs, the majority of your community development workers are, are, are young women that we work with, are members that we work with, but also just to create that space and advocacy and awareness about the women's rights. For me, I think that's the biggest thing because it has ripple effects. When women themselves can begin to defend and stand for their rights, they don't need to be there. So just advocacy and the, uh, and the necessary noise to make sure that women's issues are on the table, their voices are heard, for me that's the biggest price because they have to be empowered to be able to fight their own battles without any big system. Any specific programs that um, you feel perhaps we didn't cover, specifically as the media, and uh, that you are really, really very, very proud of? We never invited media for it. As I say, we met them on the road. So, but uh, we never, as I say, even my term became a media organization but we did lots of programs in community you ground the one that stands out support for 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 for, for victims of for violence but also the ones that we've run very well it support also on poverty alleviation programs and uh, women empowerment programs one of the allegations as you know um uh, or the criticisms of uh, um uh, leveled um at the women's league is that you've been voting for the and that you've never really used your position within the ANC uh, cleverly and to generally women's uh, advantage? I can't be far from the truth. I mean, ANC has 86 members. It's 46 of us. As the country, we're the second leading country as parliamentarians. There's lots to, to, to really brag about that we've achieved as a country and as women. So it's people who really drive with their eyes uh, close. You look around here, <laughs> you have a, a young woman standing as a president. Those things never used to happen. For us, the biggest thing is to create the necessary awareness, the space, so that girls, wherever they are, and women, wherever they are, there's an environment that enables them to fight their battles. Just to opening up that environment and making sure that women issues are on the table. I mean, without us saying we want a woman's president, the country says it's ready. So it means we really have succeeded in creating the necessary awareness, advocacy, and just the support and the respect for women. And that's for me much more bigger than specific thing to say we gave houses to 10 women. Let them have the necessary environment to go and fight their battles. And that's what the biggest thing is. And I think as a women's league and, and women in the South Africa, we've done extremely well. Now, speaking of um, re respect and support for women, um, it, uh, it didn't go unnoticed that, for example, um, when there were people within the ANC or the broader alliance movement who really were, some people felt, were personal in their attacks on the public protector, for example, that the Women's League didn't come to, you know, uh, to protect this woman and to speak out because it wasn't the next, the, the what it was happening to her on that day, but it could happen to any one of you the next day. No, it's not only her. We've not spoken anything, Andrea. We've not spoken anything. We really feel that there are some battles which we should allow to pen themselves out and at the right moment come in. So we can't every morning when you wake up to say, here's the public protector, victim then we jump on the on the pen it just does doesn't work that way we have a broad plan of women empowerment even herself to have been a public protector i'm sure it's because of the women's struggles that fought that after so many men were public protectors there's a woman's a public pro it's a victory itself that we have a woman public protector but it doesn't mean that every woman every morning even when as i say woman is not a victim i mean i don't see the public protector as a victim i think she's fighting her battles and she's doing well and that's what we want we want women to go out there and fight 
And to those that say, well, 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 on this one, you really didn't want to you know, enter the fray because you were too concerned about your own positions, given that there's all these men who have to you know, affirm you, as it were, um, and uh, who are in charge. And uh, if you were to enter the fray, you would just upset the apple cart and make them angry. Not quite. We, you know, as a, a, a part of the progressive women's movement doesn't mean that we're anti-men. But it also doesn't mean that anything that a woman does, because it's a woman, we have to agree. You might want to know what, what my views are about her approach to her office. I'm quite concerned. If I have to compare her to the, to, 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 to the AG, I think to, quite, to really provide, give so, so much dignity to her office if she's a bit calm. And so that's my personal view. So it could be the view. So it has nothing to do with the apple cut. What do you it think she be should have become? I think she, 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 look at how the, the, the AG does with issues. When he gets the reports, he calls, this morning, uh, this week I had a meeting with the AG, raised the issues, tried to correct them where we are. Doesn't first go and write to the media and then say a, a, an investigation on Gandler and call it comfort and security. You just can see that there's lots of cynicism. So what I'm, the point I'm making is it doesn't mean that if you're a woman, Anything you do, we agree with. We also have the right, and I think it's fair. If we don't agree with, we don't agree with. But if we ha agree with, we will agree with and support you. So we also have to be left a space to really disagree amongst ourselves as women if we don't agree. And you have the same attitudes towards uh, Ria Piecha? No, what I'm saying, the point I was making is that... I'm just citing should, them as examples of things that people are talking about now that are... You know, no, uh, we'll allow the, 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 the due process to take place. We, we, as I say, do hope that she will fight her battles. And maybe if we find it necessary, might enter into the fray. But up to now, we've not found the reason to, to really want to enter the fray. Now, um, according to the latest reports, media reports, uh, you are now speaking openly about the need for, for a woman president. No, it's actually a very... Other, another cynical thing about the media. And I, I, I keep on trying to explain this, if you could give me a second. In 2014, for you, we had a press conference as the Women's League, wherein we were launching our elections campaign. And a journalist asked me to say, as you go out and campaign for the ANC, are you going to campaign for a woman president? And I said, in 2014, as we go to elections, as ANC, a decision has been made, the matter is closed for 2014. So it's not as if now saying for the first time, uh, I've never been against women. I, other, otherwise, I would not be part of the progressive women's movement if I really never believed in women. And I fully support women, believe in them, and have confidence in them. And, and, and I'm very confident that if indeed, as a country, we succeed to have a woman president, I think uh, we'll all be, all of us, even with men, you'll see that the socialization of women, less egoistic, focused on the task, hardworking, it's going to bear us lots of fruits. So I, I'm really for a, a woman a, a president, support women leaders, and that's what we, it's in the NC struggle for. Why would we fight for 50-50 if we don't believe in women leadership? Are you going to, though, actively campaign for a woman president for 2017? No, the NC Women's League operates different. I'm not an individual. So if whoever gets elected gets the mandate from, 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 from the ANC, you can't just stand up as a woman president as if that organization belongs to you or that platform belongs to you. You must be mandated by the structure. We have a, we're at a policy conference. If the policy conference resolves that this is the battle to take, the president will have to do it. If, but there's no resolution. The president just can't stand on the platform and represent women on things they've never said they uh, spoken about. So it will, it, it, whatever, we, we do will be informed by whatever this conference is going to resolve. And I, I do hope that the conference will resolve as such and therefore the whoever becomes president will be will have to do it because it will have been a, a task given to her by, by, by conference. But not because as an individual that's your wish. You can't just treat an organization like that because it's not your private property. Three decisions that we should look forward to at the end come the end of your four day conference. The biggest decision that I really hope for, amongst others, is just dealing with harmful cultural practices. I do hope conference will resolve quite strongly about initiations and the deaths that happened of initiates. And the way it's masculine that no one can come in, you'll only hear that your child is dead. I just think that the regulations that are there, government has to implement and deal with all these harmful practices, toilet and other things, I think it is a big problem. 
Do you think government is doing enough at the moment? I don't think so. I don't think so. And who, I who must carry the blame? I, 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 the I'm, I'm, the blame. I'm blaming government. Actually. I'm blaming government uh, for really not protecting uh, poor kids adequately. I think they could do more. They could insist that there must be doctors, kids must be tested, there must be a doctor on site. I think there are things that government has the power and has the responsibility to do to protect the lives of young people. I just don't think we do enough to protect young initiates and just treat their deaths as statistics. Of it. I just think it's one big issue that I hope conference, the policy conference had discussed it. I hope we resolve on what needs to be done and are able to go and put pressure on government. The main issue about the mainstreaming of women in the economy. Uh, we did a, 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 a survey, we're not represented in boards, we're not in business. Even if you talk about industrialization, talking about the so just the, the, a, a decision or a plan to make sure that women are mainstreamed, mainstream in the economy, not what uh, uh, NC sometimes talks about, about cooperatives and other things. I say cooperatives are fine, but we want real money. Like men are like in real men money. Mm. Yeah, we, we want money. We want to, to win the main economy. And we really think that government has to do more. We're grateful that they have Lindu Zulu to really deal with small business. And that small business should be an incubator for women to, 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 to move forward. But there are also lots of other social economic issues, like you know, issues of, of education and health. But for me, what stands out is violence, is the economy, and uh, uh, as I say, your... your, 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 your Harmful cultural practices. Mamo thank you very much. Best of luck yeah, with thank you very your much. conference. Thanks. Well, Mamo Tsekha, we'll of course um, be bringing you those conversations with women league leaders, including her, tomorrow morning on Morning Live.